and have a conversation with Vincent Asifa, who is a communications director at the Ministry of Education. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you. We're grateful that you could join us at such a short notice. Let's, let's go back to the reasons why the teachers went on strike in the first place. You uh, consistently indicated that the strike was illegal, although uh, the ministry didn't directly take any legal action until the National Labor Commission went ahead to do so. Uh, do you feel vindicated that the teachers eventually, upon a court order, have resumed work? Well, let me say a very good afternoon to your cherished viewers. First and foremost, let me indicate that the Ministry of Education does not have any locus in law to trigger processes and um, legal actions against the, um, the striking workers teachers. or the striking teachers, let me put it that way. And secondly, it is the National Labor Commission that has locus in law to be able to, as it were, trigger legal processes against the labor unions. As you rightly indicated, when they declared a the strike, I told the teacher unions and the general public that there are processes that are supposed to be followed by teacher unions to be able to declare a strike. In this particular instances, they failed in following their own terms and references to which they were engaged or to which they were appointed to be teachers in this country. And for that matter, I declared their strike as illegal. And of course, the National Labor Commission declared it illegal before they even went to court to go and seek for um, an interlocutory injunction mm -hmm. to be able to call um, all teachers to be able to go back to the classroom. What I am expecting from the teacher unions, even though they've been able to issue a press release, um, that they should be able to send test messages out for all their followers to understand and know that indeed they've called off the strike because when they declare the strike, they send test messages across to all their members to know that indeed, whether you have heard of the press conference or the press release or not, there was a test message that was indicating that we were supposed to stay out of classroom. And that is what I'm expecting that the teacher union should be able to do. But the general impression as we speak is that for now, um, teachers are already in school and I think that they are doing a very good job. Um, teachers who are supposed to um, agree and understand that indeed um, this is the time that for them to obey their teacher unions are also doing a very good job. And I think that the general impression is quite good. And um, teacher unions should be able to um, employ and admonish um, their leaders, uh, their followers, to be able to ensure that they go back so, to the So I, 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 I want to assume that you are able to confirm that the letter in circulation supposed to be coming from the uh, Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, in instructing for a call-off is genuine? Well, I have seen, I have seen a letter um, that suggests that the teacher unions have called off their strike. Indeed, I, I was on um, Asempere FM with um, Angel Carbon. When he did, he also declared that if that is the case, then they are calling off the strike because it's a court order. They have nothing to do they, that they. to call their teachers as law-abiding as they are, they have to. to, go back to the classrooms. Right, uh, so let me quickly introduce uh, Benatha, labor expert, is joining us. Uh, ben, thanks very much uh, for joining us. So I know that you've been following this teacher agitation and other agitations on, on the workers' front. Uh, do you get a sense that the tool of strike is being persistently overused to more like arm wrestle government into paying for deals they possibly didn't budget for? Well, uh, when it comes to teachers, I can say yes and no. I have done a, a little bit of research for 14 years into public sector strikes, and the teachers are the number one, followed by doctors and the rest. But it becomes more or less coercion in some sense. But blackmail it, 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 in other sense. No, it's not a blackmail. It's a tool which is legislated, except in the essential services sector, which is not anticipated, of course, but they still go on strike. But when it comes to teachers, the so, so let me, let me quickly touch sector. on the approach that the, the three teacher unions used. Would you say it was fair? Under the circumstance, I mean, we had been told emphatically by the education ministry that they had processed payment for uh, a lot of people. About 95 percent. 95 percent. And there were only about 30,000 people who were owed various sums. And negotiations were underway and processes were underway for payments to be made. And yet the teacher unions decided to withdraw their services despite this goodwill. Did you think they use the right approach? Well, for me, the teachers have a legitimate concern, but the approach is not the best. The approach not being the best in the sense that these are more or less legacy areas. Mm. Government has worked on it, you know, tirelessly, 
achieved 95% of them. But of course, you are not able to say that everybody on the list should be paid. Some kind of you know, auditing must go in. So some patience is, 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 is needed. Where I do not think that the, the, the laws have been followed, where the processes, when you look at Act 651, that's the Labor Act 2003, there are clear provisions as to how you can embark on strike. One of them is to notify the parties involved and also notify National Labor Commission. After the notification, you have to wait for seven clear days to elapse. So if you didn't follow that, obviously, your strike, no matter your legitimate concerns, it's will legal. be declared as illegal. illegal. One thing that I, Auntie, I think we have to draw attention to constructively is the tool of strike and the way our laws you know, have not been able to make adequate provisions for it going forward. When we have the opportunity of amending our labor laws, we must demand that unions must possess strike funds. And not only that, we must also legislate in such a way that when it comes to So let, let me get clarity, this strike fund, a, what a strike would it fund. do? For, what exa would it for do? example, if the employer were to task or to demand from the employees the losses incurred for embarking on illegal strike, what it means is that all the staff who had been involved in the strike will incur should some be losses, surcharged. should be surcharged, which is within the, the, the ambit of the law. They should be surcharged. If they are going to be surcharged, then what it means is that those losses, somebody must make up for so out of their own union dues and the rest, they should be able to pay that. There are, some, there are times that people embark on strike because it's been declared by leadership. But intransigence comes in simply because a lot of them might not agree to the strike. And even within the executive themselves, majority may not. But because the powerful ones say, let's go on strike, everybody follows. So going forward, we have to make provisions in such a way that if we want to embark on such a strike where all of us as a nation we are going to you know, incur losses, then definitely there ought to be a yes or no vote amongst them. If they have a yes vote for going on strike, then we know that within their own democratic dispensation, they have agreed to go on strike. But not five, three, five, sixteen executives go declare strike and look, look at the free SHS. We are all complaining of the amount of money we input. So if you have two days, three days, children in schools doing nothing, but they are eating, we are going to pay for all the services, utilities, and staff will also be paid. Definitely, mm. these are losses that mm. we don't have to incur. So going forward, we have to draw our attention to some of these things. Of right, course, uh, some of we'll, us will make we'll get the necessary to, proposals. We'll get back to you pretty shortly uh, to wrap up on this conversation. But Vice President of NAGRAT, uh, Jacob Anaba, says the three teacher unions will only report to work when monies hit their account. He said the unions do not believe in the documents suggesting monies have been paid. Let's listen to him. This does not come as a surprise because... Uh, we uh, have been in this before. If you recall, last year, Nagrat had to go on strike on similar issue. And the whole vice president in Cape Coast at NAT conference indicated that they had released 41 million. It turned out to be <laughs> not true because th those money did not hit the accounts of our, our members. So we will not take this paperwork as indication that it has been paid. We want to see the money hitting the accounts of our members, those who are due to be paid. And that we will believe in what they are doing. But this, we will not take it for anything. Right, so Jacob and Abada, let, let me put that to you, uh, Vincent. Uh, the teachers are saying they went back to the classroom because of the court order. Not that they trust the instructions that came for payment of some 49.9, almost 50 million, uh, the order from the finance ministry. And that, I mean, if it were not for the court ruling, they would not be in the classrooms until the money touched their accounts. Your quick reaction. Well, that, that's not a contention. Um, clearly, 
over the past few days, they've shown that they, they, they don't have any trust um, as far as the Ghana Education Service is concerned. And whatever the Ghana Education Service and the Ministry of Employment and Labor tells them, they don't have any trust. And so it is not in contention. But the truth of the matter is that... That it doesn't bother the Ministry of Education that, well, that has the, been their the position. teachers don't trust the that, that, education that, service? That, that, that has been their position. But the truth of the matter also is that the amount of money that we owe teachers is just around 8 million Ghana cities. So if anybody says that government has released 49 million Ghana cities, and for that matter, we are going to pay them, that is not true. The 49 million Ghana cities were areas that were released about two, three months to pay for transfer grants. So the 8 million Ghana cities is the 1,200 Ghana cities, sorry, the 1,200 people that we are supposed to be paying on the 19th of December, including salaries that we are supposed to be paying during Christmas. And so the teachers should be aware that government or if you like Ghana Education Service have always been committed in paying these areas and we gave them a roadmap as to how we are going right. to pay for these areas. So unfortunately they did not have any belief or trust in it. So processes. this is just a roadmap? Well, the, I mean, the, the order to issue 49 million doesn't look like an, a roadmap. Well, the 49 million Ghana cities were areas that were released yeah. two, three months ago. And it it's covers not part 2017 of the, through to 2019. And that is even transfer grants. Mm. We are talking about areas that, that, are, that is legacy areas from 2012 to 2016. 16. And that is a different matter altogether. And that one we owe about 8 million Ghana cities. And when I spoke to the Ministry of Finance yesterday, clearly by 19th of December, we are going to pay all these areas, including salaries, on the 19th of December. So I do not see how and why uh, teachers were having problems as to the commitment that the Ghana Education Service was actually showing to them and for that matter they should agree or they should have agreed that we were going to pay this money to them by the end of the right. Uh, of Vincent, the thanks very much. Uh, ben, I'll give you a final word, right. uh, 30 seconds. Uh, for, for me, I, I was taken aback when I heard the statement that teachers don't strike, uh, don't trust their, their employers. It's alarming, right? I mean, it's alarming and to even go ahead to say that teachers don't, uh, don't uh, trust the National Labor Commission is, is further, you know... Aggravation. Uh, aggravation. <laughs> I mean, the, the, we, we ought to have trust in the system because if National Labor Commission sits as an arbitrator or arbitration panel in any case or is an administrative body for mediation and you say that you don't trust in them, does that mean that you will not listen to them? Any outcome, you know, you are not going to obey it. But the teachers have shown maturity by going back to classroom because it's a court order. And both going parties for, should going be forward, exercising Yes, going forward, maturity. we need to empower the National Labor Commission to be able to give orders. To bite more. Yes, often. to bite more. It, it's extremely important. Right. Uh, ben Arthur, we're grateful for our time. Vincent and Stefa, thanks very much for coming in. I'm Stephen Antti. This is still Midday Live.